Next on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. It's hats on the hill as we head to Washington, D.C. for NCBA's annual legislative conference. Plus, a look at the new Congressional Beef Caucus and the value this could bring to the beef industry. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Each spring, you can count on two things in Washington, D.C. The cherry blossoms bloom and cattlemen and women who come to town for the annual NCBA Legislative Conference. Cattlemen and Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter takes us inside this important event. Washington, D.C. is always a busy place, and on Capitol Hill, people line up outside the House and Senate office buildings to meet with their members of Congress and press their case on issues they care about. Even so, within those crowds, the cattlemen and women tend to stand out. People that show up are the ones that make the decisions, and there's a lot of people out there right now trying to get in front of their representatives, and uh, we have to be there and if, if we're going to be heard, because if we're not, uh, it's going to be, that void's going to be filled by, by another voice. And where we are only 2% of, agriculture is only 2% of the population, we must have that voice, and this is where you're going to get that. So, very proud of all the producers that have taken time out of their busy schedules to come to D.C. to meet with the representatives. It will have great impact for us in the future. A congressman or a senator get to hear dozens and dozens of different groups each day in their office, so it's important that our message doesn't get drowned out in all the, the noise from all the other groups. But when we do come here, I think uh, we're still viewed as folks in the white hat, and we leverage our fewer numbers compared to other groups. We get a lot of mileage and goodwill out of what we do, and so that even makes it more important to come and be here. I think one of the unique things about the cattlemen is they do remember our hats and our boots and our appearance, so that helps us maybe distinguish ourselves from everybody else. Plus, a lot of them have a real appreciation for the land and the job we do. We get a lot of thanks for the job we do. In all, more than 220 cattlemen and women gathered for the annual NCBA Legislative Conference. Their job, to make sure the voice of the cattle industry is heard and recognized by those who make policy and regulations in Washington, D.C. I think it's important that every cattleman um, come to D.C., they need to hear from us, they need to hear what's on our mind, what's on our hearts, um, the things that are affecting our businesses. Um, they need to know um, issues that we're facing, issues that we're promoting, and they hear it from us, cattlemen, um, and it makes, a, it makes a bigger impact. We have a great staff at NCBA, but the members need to come and express their views as well. Now we expect this new administration will continue the work that it's already done in trying to take and relieve us of the regulatory burden that we've had for quite some time. We've already seen it through the executive order to start the process to repeal waters in the United States. I do expect that we'll see more of that. And I think that if that's all we get out of this administration, that's going to be a huge success for us. But we're going to have other opportunities because Congress is going to move forward and we expect a, a great opportunity to actually work on comprehensive tax reform. That's something we haven't been able to work on seriously in quite some time. It means we're going to have an opportunity to try to once and for all kill the death tax. Top issues for the cattle industry include tax reform and the upcoming farm bill and the hope of modernizing the Endangered Species Act to make it more effective and less burdensome to those who depend on the land for their livelihood. Equally important is the need to foster greater trade opportunities in a world where U.S. beef is in demand. Everywhere we go this week we're talking about the trade issues and the fact that agriculture is a shining star in uh, trade for the United States and it's how important it is that we continue to main maintain and gain additional access to uh, countries around the world for our products and uh, China certainly comes to mind as one that would be great to get it more open to uh, more U.S. beef. That's really vitally important that we have the ability to trade and we have um, some big players in that. They talk about repeal of NAFTA, that's not good for the beef industry. It might be good for someone in a manufacturing segment, but not for beef. Uh, we partner with Canada and with Mexico and have a really good trade um, you know, relation there. We don't want that touched. 
So it's important that we talk about that. And those who make policy in Washington say they welcome the opportunity to see cowboy hats on Capitol Hill and the chance to hear from those who make their living in cattle country. I want to thank you all for being here because you're taking time out from your busy schedule, from your families, from working at your farm, to be up here on the Hill to meet with members of Congress, to make sure that they know what you all face and how their decisions drastically affect your way of life. Reporting from the NCBA Legislative Conference in Washington, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Even as cattlemen and women got their work done on Capitol Hill during the legislative conference, there were many who were still mindful of the devastating impact of the wildfires that hit producers in Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas just last month. In visiting with Cattlemen to Cattlemen, several top leaders brought up the wildfire issue and the need for an ongoing response to this disaster. In the Midwest, in Kansas, and other states, we've had some just devastating fires, uh, lost a lot of cattle, um, lost a lot of uh, farms and grazing area, and so uh, we're very aware of that. Help is on the way. Uh, we have relief programs that we're pushing forward, and, and we want to make sure the resources are there for the cattlemen. You know, our heart breaks for these uh, men and women who've lost their herds, who you know have spent their lives uh, in producing uh, and building their farms to see it to see it. Uh, uh, you know, a, a wildfire, take it down to us is, is heartbreaking and we want to make sure that we're there for them and in my state in Kansas, uh, we've lost a lot of acres and so it'll take some time to build that back up. And that's the importance of having NCBA here and that's the importance of Colin and his team being here every day. If we didn't have that, I, I shudder to think what would happen to our industry and our business because there's so few of us. And, and we see this in the example of the wildfire. Um, wildfire is old news and yet there are still families out there who are suffering, they're trying to overcome and we're working very hard to make sure that this is not a family ending business tragedy, that, it, that the fire doesn't end their business. If we don't have Colin and his team helping us make that case continually, then the, the issues of a Supreme Court justice and a health care overhaul and all those very important issues will completely overweight us, uh, overshadow us, and we'll just slip away. On the wildfires, I tell you what, I've never been so proud to be, a, uh, be in the beef community because uh, throughout the United States, I mean truthfully, all the beef producers in the United States, whether it be hay, monetary, uh, milk replacer, fencing supplies, they've really come out of the woodwork to support these fellow producers in Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and Colorado. And it's really warming to the heart. It doesn't get a lot of play on the big media. We've seen a lot on social, social media, and the beef community is taking care of itself. And I'm very proud to be a beef producer and uh, uh, be involved in this effort to rebuild these operations. You know, we're a hardy bunch, and, and what you do see on social media is a tremendous effort, both in their own local communities, in their own states, but also the other states that have really chipped in. And we're going to continue to support that relief effort for those folks that lost a lot of their production. The cattle community is rallying to continue helping those in need with a variety of donations and support. To find out more about the current efforts and how you can help in the wildfire recovery, you can go to the website beefusa.org and click on the Fire Relief Resources tab. Up next on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll discuss what the newly reestablished Congressional Beef Caucus could mean for the industry. And later, we'll take a trip to the 30th Annual Ohio Beef Expo. Don't go away, we'll be right back. There is a new world out there, revealing itself in unpredictable ways. A world that demands more from the land and those who grow, farm, and build on it. This new world calls for the ingenuity to get more out of it, while preserving as much as we can. After all, to stay ahead of tomorrow, we need to be equipped for it today. New Holland, equipped for a new world. Forward, it's more than a direction, it's mandatory because the beef business rewards the progressive, the doers, the ones who know what it takes to go easy on cattle and never set them back. So set your eyes on the horizon 
turn your back to the wind, and move your herd the only way you know. Forward. Vista Vaccines. Always ahead. Saddle up and make your way to Denver, Colorado for the 2017 Cattle Industry Summer Business Meeting. This is your chance to stay up to date on beef industry trends and policies, meet with industry leadership and your fellow cattlemen and women. Plus, you'll get insights on hot topics at the Issues Forums. Mark your calendar for the 2017 Cattle Industry Summer Business Meeting, July 12th to the 15th in Denver. Find out more at beefusa.org. Welcome back. The NCBA staff in Washington, D.C. works hard each and every day to educate lawmakers about the issues that matter to cattlemen and women all across our country. Reporter Brad Bulla has more on the Congressional Beef Caucus and how this group will help make the education process just a little bit easier. On the ranch, it's easier to move cattle when you have a skilled team working together to get the job done. That same idea applies on Capitol Hill when it comes to advancing policies that protect the cattle business. And building a team is part of the idea behind the creation of the Congressional Beef Caucus. I'm honored to be here today to kick off the Congressional Beef Caucus for the 115th Congress. So this morning we announced the formation of a new Beef Caucus, which is a, a group of uh, members of Congress, Republicans and Democrats, uh, joining together to uh, express our support for the beef industry, to represent our cattlemen, uh, and make sure that Congress is aware of the issues that face our ranchers. And uh, when it comes to ag policy, the farm bill, taxes, trade, uh, regulations, uh, this will be a source uh, to provide information and advocacy for uh, our hardworking cattlemen back home. And I think it's very important that we understand uh, just having an information source and communicating to uh, congressmen what our issues are. So we're talking about communicating to the consumer because they're so far removed from, from production. We have the same issues in Congress. So it's very important that we have a an ear in Congress that understands what our issues truly are and the effects of, the, of some of the votes they take and what that has as far as an impact to the beef industry. This is one way to get a message, uh, especially to the, to the urban areas, why uh, this uh, industry is so important to the country. The founding co-chairs of the Beef Caucus, a Republican from Kansas and a Democrat from Texas, believe there are a variety of issues affecting the beef industry where the two political parties can work together. Obviously Congress is divided on a number of issues. We don't think that uh, beef production should be one of them. We think this is an uh, issue that hits uh, every district, uh, whether they represent uh, cattlemen or whether just they're consumers that go to the store that uh, you know, buy beef. They want to know that we have a great um, uh, productive uh, system in America no matter where we are and so uh, the bipartisan nature is uh, shows that uh, Republicans and Democrats coming together on an issue hopefully means that when issues come to Congress that relate to beef production that it's not a divided issue that, that, that both sides of the aisle can come together and, that, and we know that there are Democrats and Republicans that are cattlemen and Democrats and Republicans that eat beef and so we want to unify this, uh, this uh, these issues around in this caucus. You know, the first thing is by getting, I think we got about already uh, 35 members already uh, on board, bipartisan. Co-chair is Kevin Yoder for Kansas, a good man. We actually serve in the appropriations together, so we're very bipartisan. And then and two things. One uh, is to make sure we get among our members, uh, and we certainly want to, we got 35 members, so we certainly want to beef up the numbers. Number two, uh, it, so we can get educated among ourselves and be united when it comes to policy. But the other thing is just to get the word out to the general public. The Congressional Beef Caucus is already adding members, and the caucus will be valuable to NCBA as a way to bring members of Congress together and advocate for important policies ranging from tax reform to common sense environmental regulation. I think any time that there's a focus in Washington, D.C. on issues that affect the beef industry, uh, good things will come from that and, uh, uh, you know, particularly uh, when consumers uh, in these urban areas see a congressman from their area uh, talking about beef issues, that's certainly positive for us in our communication effort to tell our story to our consumers. 
you have this leadership here that understands a lot of our issues and other congressmen that necessarily don't understand our issues. And I think they'll reach out to some of these members of this caucus to find out the, the true answers of what the issues really are. And that'll help them uh, make their decisions on how they're going to vote on important legislation that we have coming up before us. We think if we can uh, put our beef against any other country's beef uh, in, a, in a market around the, around the world, that we will succeed and that our cattlemen will, will um, prevail. And so we just want to make sure that we're opening those markets for them. We want to make sure that if there are regulations or burdens that make it harder on them, you know, immigration policy, there's a lot of things this, that really we're going to dive into here that will allow us to um, help m make it easier and, and more productive for our American cattlemen. Those joining the Beef Caucus include members of Congress who represent cattle producers, but also those from urban districts who simply appreciate beef as a valuable, nutritional food for consumers worldwide. In Washington, I'm Brad Buller reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now, if you'd like to support the beef industry, why not become a NCBA member? By doing so, you'll be sustaining the work of NCBA in defending and advocating for the cattle industry in Washington, D.C. It's easy to do. Just call toll-free 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit the website beefusa.org. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll continue our look into NCBA's work in Washington and why these efforts are so important. And later, Learn about an amazing work of art in NCBA's headquarters that you have to see to believe. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Say goodbye to your toughest pasture and rangeland weeds for good. Because one product offers season-long control, handles the widest spectrum of broadleaf weeds, and clears the way for increased forage with greater grazing flexibility so you get more beef per acre at a cost that can't be beat. It's Grazon Next HL Herbicide, and if it's in your pastures, plain and simple, weeds won't be. There are many great reasons to join NCBA, and that includes exclusive NCBA member-only discounts, such as savings on new equipment purchases from New Holland. Hi, I'm Mike Corman with New Holland Agriculture. And I'm pleased here to talk about our New Holland member benefits to the National Cattlemen's and Beef Association members. New Holland offers special benefits to NCBA members where they can save up to $1,000 off the purchase of a new New Holland equipment. Members can save off the purchase of New Holland hay and forage and mid-range tractors, as well as other products. We have New Holland dealers located throughout the United States. Stop into your New Holland dealer and learn more. New Holland and NCBA, smart partners for agriculture. Savings on equipment purchases from New Holland is just one of the fantastic deals you get as an NCBA member. Don't miss out. Join NCBA today at beefusa.org. Joining us now to talk about the importance of industry engagement and NCBA membership is Dan McCarty. He's the Director of Industry and Affiliate Outreach for NCBA. Dan, last month we put a lot of cowboy hats and boots on Capitol Hill. Tell folks, why is this legislative conference so important for our industry? Well, it's just a great opportunity for, for cattlemen from across the country to get together and go back to D.C., uh, pound on some doors and talk to some of our senators and representatives. And it's also really important that we use it as a relationship building opportunity because, you know, they have large staffs back there, our, our representatives, and they need to get to know who we are and we need to build those relationships with them. That way when something does come up that uh, involves our industry or something that we should have a say in, they can feel comfortable enough to give us a call and reach out to us and let, let us tell them how those ideas and, and possible regulations and legislation is going to affect us back home on the farm or ranch. Mm -hmm. And you know, some people say that uh, their voice simply can't be heard on a national level. They're too small, they're too insignificant. Uh, what, what would you say to those people who, who suggest that uh, maybe they can't make an impact on the national level? Well, I mean, that's what our form of government's all about, is, is uh, representation of the people by the people. So the only way to, to actually make a difference is to get involved. Uh, they always say that politics is a, a sport that you have to get involved in. It's a contact sport. And it, it really starts with our state affiliates. 
uh, you know, folks should get involved with their state affiliates because they have very strong relationships with those representatives and senators from their state. That's the first place to get involved. That's where those relationships really start to form. Uh, and you know, you just got to get back there and, and spend the time and spend the money and put the effort in to develop those relationships so those people feel comfortable talking to you and you feel comfortable talking to them. You know, it's always, it's always a pretty eye-opening experience the first time you go back there and see what it's all about. But uh, when you get those relationships in place and, and those people know you and you know them, uh, it really makes it just a simple conversation with folks. And it, it's a really easy way for anybody to have an impact on the process. You mentioned state affiliates, and I know uh, you believe uh, so firmly in the state and national partnership. Tell folks how you've seen that state national partnership play out and really benefit all of us in the cattle industry. Well, that's really what this whole thing's all about. I mean, uh, NCBA is the national organization, and we're built with all the state affiliates, uh, and many of our state affiliates even flow down to the local level. Uh, and it's, it's really fun to see when, uh, you know, an idea starts at a local level, uh, a grassroots level, uh, and you see you're at one of those meetings and you see that idea turn into policy at that meeting and, and then at the state annual meeting you see it put together and, and passed on to NCBA and it's, it's a real neat process to see when it, when it happens that way. Uh, I mean all of our ideas, I come, come, ideas come that way. They are, it, we're a grassroots organization uh, and we just wouldn't be able to do this without the input uh, and the participation of all those state affiliates and all those members that are involved on both the county, national and state level actually. You've read the same articles that I've read before with folks saying that NCBA is just for the big guys. What do you say to that? Well, it's simply not true. We represent pretty much everybody across the nation, uh, anybody involved in our business. Uh, you can take a look at our member numbers and see that uh, we have everybody from the one head guy to the part-time hobby guy to uh, some of the largest uh, ranching operations in the United States. And I think that's really what makes us unique and that's really part of our strength is that uh, we have equal voices from all those people, uh, all those segments of the industry, and uh, I think that's what kind of packs the power to our punch is that we have all those people involved. Absolutely, and we are the l oldest uh, cattle organization in the country as well, aren't we? Absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here, Dan. Thanks for having me. There's strength in numbers. If you'd like to support the beef industry, why not become an NCBA member? By doing so, you'll be sustaining the work of NCBA in defending and advocating for the cattle industry in Washington, D.C. It's easy to do. Just call toll-free 1-866-USA-BEEF or you can visit the website beefusa.org. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll take you inside the 30th Annual Ohio Beef Expo. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You know, there is a saying, hay lost in the field robs yield. That's why John Deere balers are designed with tightly spaced belts so you capture more crop in every pass. Compared to other balers with wide spaced belt designs, John Deere balers let you put up more quality hay and put more money in your pocket. That's how we run. And that's why nothing runs like a deer. There are many great reasons to join NCBA, and that includes exclusive NCBA member-only discounts, such as savings up to $2,500 on new equipment purchases from John Deere. We at John Deere are proud to be sponsors of the NCBA. We've been long-term sponsors and have been in the livestock business for over 125 years. John Deere has a wide variety of products that support you in the industry. We have a wide variety of discounts that are exclusive to you as NCBA members. You can visit our John Deere dealers locally throughout the United States to be able to find those specific discounts and the products that would apply to your, your needs. So thank you for being an NCBA member and allowing us to support you. Saving big money on equipment purchases from John Deere is just one of the great deals you get as an NCBA member. Don't miss out. Join NCBA today at BeefUSA.org. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD-TV. Welcome back. All around the country, state cattle organizations host a variety of annual events and expos that help to showcase cattle breeds, develop young people in the industry, and bring cattle producers together. One outstanding example is the Ohio Beef Expo that was started back in 1988 as a way to sell seed stock genetics in one location. 
Today, it has grown to become the premier event for Ohio's beef industry. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Dave Russell brings us more on this multi-purpose event that just celebrated its 30th anniversary. For 30 years, the Ohio Cattlemen's Association has coordinated the Ohio Beef Expo and proudly watched it grow into a signature event that draws a big crowd. And the organizers of the three-day event believe the expo works to represent all of their state's beef producers. This is a big anniversary for us, and we spend a lot of effort and a lot of time bringing all segments of the, the industry together and trying to make this an event for everyone and making everyone feel comfortable here no matter what your part of the industry is. Today we hosted a, a, a junior uh, judging contest to bring some of our 4-H and FFA members in, and, and they're here today at the trade show kind of taking a look around. We want those folks to uh, visit with these businesses that are here and increase their knowledge of things that are going on in the Industry. The platform that we use for the Ohio Beef Expo is that we have something for everyone. We have a junior show, we have a judging contest, we have breed shows and sales, we have a trade show that has over 140 exhibitors this year. So we try and be a service to anybody that owns cattle here in the state of Ohio. As the expo has grown, so has its trade show. Producers from Ohio, as many as 20 other states, and even Canada come here to see the latest products and technologies. The Ohio Beef Expo is one of the largest expo trade shows um, that we know of in the country, and it keeps growing. Um, it's sold out uh, this year again, we're proud of that. This trade show is unique in its blend, uh, bringing all the latest technology, uh, anything, if you have questions, this is the event to come to. You'll get the answers here, there's many, many different manufacturers, feed companies, vaccine companies, so on like that, you'll get your answers here at the Ohio Beef Expo. We have a lot of uh, uh, commercial cattlemen that will come to the trade show to look at some of the new equipment. Um, there's something here for everybody, really. The trade show has the show type uh, products, it has the, the production type products, and you know, a lot of the people come here to see the latest in, whether it be cattle shoots, pharmaceuticals, whatever the case may be, they can learn about new products and techniques here. I'm proud of everybody on, on my trade show committee, the whole expo committee. Everybody works together to make this show one of the top trade shows in Ohio. Beyond the trade show and the youth events, the backbone of the Ohio Beef Expo is still the cattle sales that showcase the state's premier seed stocks genetics across a variety of cattle breeds. I think it's a, it's a great place to showcase the genetics available here in the state of Ohio. Uh, we have a lot of consigners that have a lot of great cattle and represent a lot of great genetics. And I think it's, uh, it's really an opportunity for people that might not otherwise have access to those genetics to actually see, see and uh, hands-on and get to interact with the, with the breeders and discuss what they really have to, to offer. I've been fortunate enough to be a part of this expo for 29 years. I missed the first one, uh, but ever since I moved to Ohio in 1988, I've been coming down to the expo. We think it's a great opportunity for smaller breeders within the state of Ohio and actually out of the state of Ohio because there's just such a huge crowd. We think it's one of the biggest audiences that you'll have on the East Coast for getting cattle sold and purebred cattle sold as far as that's concerned. All breeds are represented um, and all segments are represented by semen sales, female sales, bull sales, you know, they got what they call the genetic pathway that they have developed and it is, it's one of the biggest events that you'll go to all the way across the country. With outstanding cattle genetics being shown and sold, it's no surprise the expo draws big crowds and it serves as a valuable way for the Ohio Cattlemen's Association to connect with their members and find out what's on their minds. You have a, a nice cross-section of the producers throughout the state of Ohio that show up here. Everything, you have FFA members, you have uh, mid-generation, you have some of the older types. Uh, we need them all. Uh, we try to serve them all, and it's a, it's a great uh, opportunity to reach out to them and uh, share the pertinent information that's necessary in the industry. And this is our event as a, a board that we put on every year. And so it's, it's the one event that we get to actually reach out and touch a lot of our members, get to talk to them face to face, and they can come and visit with us and get the input that we need to continue on doing what we need to do as a board to um, further the cattle industry in Ohio. 
This year was a great milestone in the Ohio Beef Expo's rich history, and it looks to continue to be the premier beef industry event in the Buckeye State for many years to come. The Ohio Beef Expo to me is, I think, definitely tradition. Tradition, but also innovation. We're always constantly making it better. Uh, just to see the change over the years from when I first attended it and to now, it's just amazing to see the growth and the excitement that just continues to build over the years. The Ohio Beef Expo is changing every year. We're trying to make it a better event. The industry moves and we have to keep moving with it. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been around for 30 years if we hadn't changed with the industry as it changes. And we plan on being here for another 30 years at least. From the Ohio Beef Expo in Columbus, I'm Dave Russell, reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. The Ohio Beef Expo is just one example of the great work that state cattlemen's associations do all across the country to help serve the beef industry. We look forward to bringing you more stories like this on future episodes. Still to come on this episode, we'll check in with Baxter Black. Plus, we'll visit an award-winning feed yard in Colorado. Stay with us. Long live the courageous, the tenacious, the ones who push forward and give back. Long live the greater good, the helping hand, and long live the truck built to outlast them all. Ram, America's longest lasting pickups. I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher. When we switched over to the Perina products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. Welcome back to Cattlemen and Cattlemen. At the Denver headquarters of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, one of the hallways features an amazing display of cattle brands representing ranches from all across the nation. It's known as the Living Legacy Wall, and it's a fundraising project of the National Cattlemen's Foundation. Russell Nemitz has more on how these unique brands are made. The tradition is nearly as old as the cattle industry itself. When it's branding time, cattlemen gather, and with the help of fire and steel, they make their mark. Those brands that define a ranch are often deeply connected to a cattle producing family. Everyone has a story, and, and it's been really fun to talk to the people and find out their stories of how long they've had the brand, when, they've, when their fathers or grandfathers instituted the brand, and then maybe their son lives on the different part of the property, and so they develop their own brand, so they have one for themselves, one for their son. And it's been, that's been really interesting to find out how that, how that family life is, is a whole community. Hilary DiPolo is an artistic designer who helped to develop the living legacy wall at the NCBA office in Denver. It's a unique display that has become a place of honor. Oh, I have been very impressed with how people are very proud to have their brand on display at the NCBA offices. They feel that it is part of the legacy that they are leaving. It's part of the legacy of being a rancher, of being a cowboy, of being people who are in the cattle business. And so it's very important to them to have that display on the wall. And, and they love to go see it when they're there. There's a lot of people who really love the cattle industry and that, they're trying to protect that legacy. And we want to give them a way to have that brand forever you know, on our wall, and I think that, that's significant for a lot of people. Each brand that goes on the Living Legacy Wall works as a fundraiser for the National Cattlemen's Foundation, which supports valuable programs such as the Environmental Stewardship Award and Beef Industry Scholarships. The National Cattlemen's Foundation's primary purpose is 
to maintain agriculture. You know, education is the key to that, but we want people to be able to make a living and stay on the ranches. I was very surprised how much I fell in love with people in the cattle business. Uh, I, I have found them to be just wonderful people, very sincere, very down to earth, um, and very proud of what they do and their contribution that they make to this country, to agriculture, and the contribution they make through the scholarship support, how much they love that. The brands that go on the living legacy wall are each a unique piece of art. Crafted with fire and steel by Denver area sculptor Carl Farmer. Each brand starts by being hand drawn by those who submit them. They fill out an application form and there's a square at the bottom of the application form and we ask them to carefully draw the brand in that, that square because the uh, finished product is a square. I take that and I photocopy that and I send it to Carl Farmer, who is the artist who cuts the brand from steel. He cuts it, he does a patina on it, which means that he, he coats it in an acid bath that, allow, that gives it that old timey, rusty ranch look. Oftentimes when people want to display brands, they do the positive of the brand. So what would be at the end of the branding iron? And I thought that won't work because it's too light. There's not enough graphic punch to it. So I came up with the idea of doing it with the negative. So having the brand cut out of a piece of steel. So it appears almost as if it would appear on the, on the cow itself, where you see the brand burned out of the whole area of the pelt. The piece of steel is mounted on three quarter inch MDF board. It's covered with suede. And then we have a plaque on the bottom that designates the name of the brand because the name is often quite unique. And then the um, owner of the brand and the owner of the ranch or the, the name of the ranch and then the state it was uh, registered in and the year. About 100 brands are now part of the Living Legacy Wall, a growing display that honors the cattle community and builds for the future by supporting the National Cattlemen's Foundation. I'm Russell Nimitz reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. You can find out more about the Living Legacy Wall by visiting the website nationalcattlemensfoundation.org. The Beef Quality Assurance Program strives to maximize consumer confidence and acceptance of beef. Each year, several businesses and individuals are honored for their commitment to the principles of the BQA program. Let's take a look at the 2017 National BQA Feed Yard Award winner. Magnum Feed Yard is a progressive cattle feeding operation located in northeastern Colorado. It was started back in 1943 and the current owner, Steve Gable, took over the business in the early 1990s. We began operations on July 1 of 93. Uh, at that point in time, the feed yard would hold about 3,500 cattle. Uh, we've grown and expanded over time to our present capacity today where we can hold about 22,000. Over the years, Steve and his family have updated the facilities to provide the highest level of animal comfort, health, and safety. These changes ensure the team at Magnum Feed Yard is doing things the right way to improve animal performance and enhance profitability. Even though the feeding cattle portion is something that becomes very routine and very systematic, it's about doing little things right. So focus on the little things. And if we take care of the detail things, the big thing's going to happen for themselves. Magnum has 26 standard operating procedures in place to promote employee safety, animal welfare, and sustainability. All of these procedures are in alignment with National Beef Quality Assurance Guidelines, and the entire Magnum staff adheres to strict BQA protocols. Our BQA training is a requirement of all employees. Uh, and I think all employees walk away uh, enlightened, and I think they walk away refreshed with the whole training of it. I'm most proud of the fact that we have complete buy-in on our staff, 
as it pertains to beef quality assurance. I'm a strong supporter of the beef quality assurance program, not because it's the right thing to do, uh, but because I think it's a small part of what we can do to help ensure uh, consumer confidence in our product. Magnum further delivers on its commitment to BQA through its dedication to animal comfort and well-being. They work with a veterinarian to ensure a strong health program for each animal. The feed yard also employs highly trained pen riders to help monitor cattle for stress or injuries. Our pen riders are extremely important here at Magnum because they're the ones that really handle the animal on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, they are the ones in the pen encouraging the animal to the bunk and to the water tank. Um, similar to people, if animals begin to get sick and then they go off feed in water, things just snowball and things get worse. And so we really try to use alternative methods to get those animals recovered. Everyone has been trained in where and how to administer uh, vaccines. They know what's expected of them. They know how to handle the cattle in the chute. They know how to handle the cattle bringing them to the hospital. We have standard operating procedures for all of those specific elements. The crew here is, is focused on animal well-being and what's best for the cattle and that's their focus every day. Doesn't matter if it's the feeding crew or the animal health crew, the processing crew, that's their goal. And you can tell that by the way they handle the cattle. I think that they're such a great feed yard in terms of their management practices, their emphasis on BQA, their emphasis on the final product that they produce for the consumer. It is amazing to me the amount of work and record keeping that goes into caring for cattle here at Magnum Feed Yard. Magnum's open door policy is one of its unique attributes. The feed yard understands how important it is for consumers to experience cattle production firsthand, which is why they host many tours throughout the year. We give tours on a monthly basis, uh, ag and non-ag people alike, and, and it's I think that that says a lot about what we do is us being comfortable and willing to let people come in and see our operation and I think that that helps tell our story. I think as an industry we become more comfortable uh, with this whole idea of transparency. Uh, I think the more confident consumers will become when they go to the supermarket uh, and spend their dollars making buying decisions. I think if they better understood the kinds of things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis to ensure quality, to ensure uh, safe uh, and wholesomeness, uh, I, I think their buying decision would become uh, more focused on beef. At Magnum Feed Yard, they know each BQA practice they follow is another step towards building trust with consumers. The public can rest assured the team at Magnum is taking every step to produce healthy cattle that will yield high quality beef. I like to describe Magnum Feed Yard as a hotel for cattle. We service these cattle, we give them what they need, what they want, we care for our animals. Everyone here on the yard actually eats beef from our feed yard. We feel very comfortable in what we do and we're proud of the way that we handle things. When the product from that animal hits the center of the plate, uh, we've done our part as effectively as we can to produce a wholesome and safe and nutritious product. You can begin your training to earn BQA certification using the all-new interactive BQA online classroom. This new experience is tailored to each participant's industry sector and interest. Visit BQA.org for all the details. When we return, we'll check in with Baxter Black. Stay with us. Want more profit out of your pasture? Then here's our two cents on using parasite control to make some dollars. In a trial of calves, long range outperformed Cydectin and Safeguard dewormers combined by as much as an extra 40 pounds. Yeah, that's a lot of extra profit. And that's why it pays to treat cattle with long range. Do not treat within 48 days of slaughter. Not for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows or in veal calves. Post-injection site damage can occur. These reactions have disappeared without treatment. You can't afford another season without long range. Stay Tough Fence will last three times longer and is four times stronger than low tensile fencing. High tensile wire, solid vertical stays, and tight fixed knots all provide superior strength. You will use fewer posts, saving time, labor, and money. 
Protect your investment for generations with Stay Tough Fence. Stay strong. Stay tight. Stay tough. When a new calf hits the ground, his clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives him his best odds, but if he doesn't get any, his time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. Fill them with warm water, shake it to mix, feed it with a tube or nipple, and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Get yours at OxfordAg.com. Cost less than a dead calf. Did you know that Prefert makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefert Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefert makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefert Direct, visit us at Prefert.com. Prefert, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. Dear Baxter, as a fellow veterinarian, I'm hoping you can help me. My wife Nancy has two cow dogs that will readily obey commands until they get near a cow. Then they chase the critter and can't hear a word we say. It's obvious to me they go deaf near livestock. So what's your diagnosis? Signed, Anxious in Siding, Dr. L.W. Dear L.W., I am pleased to inform you that your wife's two cow dogs are suffering from a malady that is common in blue healers. It also occurs in species further down the food chain, like backyard horses or bird dogs or teenagers. Your suggested diagnosis associates their problem with the nearness of cattle. However, research at the NASA Cow Dog Behavioral Institute in Kabul, Missouri, indicated a relationship more closely related to the proximity of the dominant figure, i.e., the greater the distance between the master, which is you, and the dog, the less your influence. The technical name for the syndrome is called Progressive Dumb Dog Detachment Amnesia, or PDA. Now, there are some social scientists who believe that PDA is a result of a broken home, a puppyhood trauma, or sucking hind tit. However, extensive studies have been done to discover a method to change the PDA dog's behavior, such as necking him to a mule or letting him drag a hundred foot of log chain. Although these techniques can alter his direction, they often interfere with his mobility in the corral. Probably the most state-of-the-art information has come from a sheep herder in Alcoba, Wyoming. It is his contention that there is nothing wrong with the dog's hearing, his breeding, or his training. Your dog is simply evolving into a thinking being and has simply chosen to ignore you. My advice, live with it or leave him home. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks, Baxter. That's certainly some good advice. There are many great reasons to become a member of NCBA, and one of them is the chance to read The National Cattleman. It's the official publication of NCBA and provides timely news and articles about the issues and events affecting the beef industry. A subscription is included free of charge when you become a member of NCBA. Joining is easy. Just give us a call at one 866 USA Beef, or visit us online at beefusa.org. We'll have more Cattlemen to Cattlemen right after this. What does it mean to be dependable? It means you do what you say you'll do time and time again. Because performance isn't optional, and your task is essential. For over 95 years, we have proven ourselves to be the most dependable choice. That's why the cattlemen of this great nation trust Ritchie to provide fresh water on demand. Ritchie, proud to be a partner to the American cattlemen since 1921. 
blaze a trail to Phoenix, Arizona and the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention with education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can check out the huge NCBA Trade Show, outstanding entertainment, and more. Don't miss the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Phoenix, January 31st through February 2nd. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. Welcome back. Want to rewatch an episode of Cattleman to Cattleman or catch up on anything you've missed? Then visit our YouTube page. You'll find replays of all of our shows filled with educational segments and producer profiles from all around the country. So check us out at youtube.com slash cattleman to cattleman. It's time now for legacy photos as we get to see some fantastic shots from farms and ranches all around our country. Let's have a look. Want to see your photo on Cattleman to Cattleman? You can submit your favorite shots at our website, cattlemantocattleman.org. Be sure to include your ranch, your farm name, and hometown, and we may use them on a future episode. Well, that's our time for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.